everybody, this is Brett from Love That's in the Belfry. I'm Kelly. And um, we are here for an oddities video. Um, we've wanted to do an oddities video for quite a while. Um, we don't have a huge oddities collection because if you know anything about oddities, oddities is a really expensive hobby to have. So we bought a lot of this stuff before we had bought a house because we actually had a little bit of money to spend. <laughs> now we have no money to spend. So I think the last thing we bought was a two-headed duckling, which we will show you. Yes. Um, but I guess we'll just hop right into it. Okay. So do you want to start with something? Sure. Okay. Um, so I will start with this. This was gifted to me by a friend. So I'm not quite sure what um, skull, what animal the skull is from. I think it's a raccoon, but I might be off because it looks a little small. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some age to it. But either way, it's still super cute. Um, it's just on this little wooden plaque so you can hang it. And it's got some, some grass around there. So it's not in the best shape. It's kind of dirty and the teeth are missing. But it's still a cool one. Yeah, it's got some age to it. Yeah. I, like I just it. figured I would start with this just because I'm not the one that purchased it. I'm not sure where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay. You want to take turns? Yeah, we can go switch off. Okay. Um, so I will start with something small, but I will show two of these things. Um, there's an oddity shop in Richmond, Virginia called Rest in Pieces, and a lot of the stuff we have here is from that oddity shop. Um, I really like um, the idea of embalming and stuff like that and just the funeral business and such. So I bought two antique embalming fluid bottles. Um, this is, this is an interesting one because it's like a pinkish, like neon color. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but I, cause I have this other one I have is just clear. It just looks like it's water in here, but it actually is embalming fluid, but I have yet to open these things and I don't really want to mess with that. <laughs> so, um, but I, I bought this just because like it is, um, they're both very old and, um, I don't know. It just. I love old stuff. Obviously, we love old stuff, so. That one says it's from Long Island, New York, and that one's from Chicago. Chicago, Illinois. So Pretty cool. So, yeah. I mean, it's not much to them, but I like old stuff, so. I mean, our dream is to just live in an old-ass house one day, so. So true. Yeah, we just like old antiques and stuff like that, so it's not much, but I, I, I like how they look, so I bought them. So this one is one of my favorites ever in the whole entire world. Yeah. I definitely splurged on this. Mm -hmm. This is from Rest in Pieces, and I'm really hoping there's not a glare. Um, this is, I guess you would call it a mummified bat. Mm -hmm. um, in this really beautiful lantern. This lantern's not antique, but it's made to look antique. Um, but look at this hanging bat. Yeah. We'll show you some better clips of it yeah. here in a second, but I am just absolutely obsessed with this and even the door like opens and you can see like all the intricate details of the bat mm -hmm. and its little teeth and they have it hanging from a little chain up in the top so they really really paid attention to detail when they were preserving this bat and oh, yeah, they definitely take great care, um, you know, those in preserving yeah. things so so this is one of my favorites. I think this was like over a hundred dollars. I think it was like just about a hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. So it was definitely a splurge, but I knew I had to grab one because they go so fast mm -hmm. in the Richmond location. So, well, I think that is only one location. Yeah. I think they just have one store. Yeah. But that's but a great, that's a great oddity shop. It's um, just in that area too is just really cool. It um, is, they, yeah. they have a place called the Hollywood Cemetery which is right by Rest in Pieces and a lot of people just go there because it's just it's just a beautiful like piece of land. Yeah piece of land that just people you know obviously cemeteries you know they definitely want to take good care of it and such but it's just it's a huge piece of land and there's a lot of people buried there but just simply just going on a walk there is just a really nice like I don't know it's just really scenic and mm -hmm. really beautiful. It is. So yeah, and there was also um, like this old folklore 
from Richmond. Yeah, about, it's uh, uh, the Hollywood Vampire. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when we first went to, we've been to Rest in Pieces, I think twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. But the first time we went, the owner, one of the owners of the shop was like, you know, there's, you know, he's like, there is stuff to do, you know, while you're in this area. And it's like, yeah, definitely just take a walk at the Hollywood Cemetery and you can learn about the folklore of the uh, Hollywood Vampire. And yeah, he like gave us directions on how to get there and we actually we're able to find it pretty easily. It's super easy. Like yeah. you, you pretty much stumble upon it, like walking from their shop to this place. But yeah, yeah that, that area is really cool in Richmond. And like, I don't know, I usually, anytime I've driven through Virginia, I'm not too fond of the traffic, but I, yeah. I really like that area in mm -hmm. the Richmond where Rest in Pieces is. Yeah. Um, so moving on to another thing from Rest in Pieces, <laughs> this is a, uh, I'll share a story about this um, in general, but um, this is a Death's Head Hawk Moth. Um, this is most famous if you've seen the movie Silence of the Lambs. Um, if you just see the cover, like you see um, the person on the front cover and they have a moth over their mouth, that's exactly what this type of moth is, is mm -hmm. the Death's Head Hawk Moth. And the reason they call it that is because if you look closely at it, it looks like there's a skull on the top of it. And that's probably the reason why they gave it Death's Head Hawk Moth, yeah. the name. But, um, so I had a really bad phobia of moths for a very long time um, because when I was about 10 years old, um, I was in, you know, at my old house and I was walking down the street with one of my friends. Like, this was like fairly like late at night. And we walked under a street light and then all of a sudden I felt this buzz like go right into my ear and something was buzzing around in my ear. And so long story short, um, I was actually, my mom was able to somehow get this moth out of my ear with a Q-tip. But I was basically walking around my head tilted to the side like this because like every five seconds I heard like bzzz, buzzing around in my head. And Did it die? It died. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it died as it came out of my ear, but it definitely was dead after it was out. Jeez. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, so for a very long time I hated moths and um, I don't know. I feel like it's like a superhero origin story waiting to happen because now it's like I actually find moths pretty fascinating mm -hmm. and like especially big ones. But like when I first for a while saw like a big moth, like during the summer, depending where you live, like sometimes you'll like walk outside of a store or something and look and like if there's like a brick wall, you'll see like a, a moth just like dead still on the wall and like. They're I, usually beautiful. One of one of my old jobs, like it happened all the time. Like I would walk outside and then there would be like a number of like moths here and there that would just be huge and I'm like, <laughs> and I'd freak out, but. I don't know they're they're really fascinating because they're also harmless like they don't cause any harm even if you see like a big giant one and like i've seen pictures you can find pictures online like mm -hmm. there's moths that are like the size of like a brick mm -hmm. and but they're harmless like they're they don't want to hurt anybody they but barely move they barely move but they're uh they can be terrifying looking yeah especially if one flies in your ear and dies <laughs> that's pretty justified yeah, so, fear. but I just thought I'd share that story about that. But, uh, yeah, the Death's Head Hawk Moth in this frame, I think it was, I think it was like 50 bucks, something like that. Yeah, mainly because of how they preserved it and, you know, framed it, I think. Yeah, yeah, because so. they, they don't want to just, there's certain things when you go into oddity shops, there's like really fairly cheap things, but certain things I think that they put in frames and obviously mm -hmm. want to have like some sort of presentation. That's yeah. why you see certain things that are like jacked up in price. Yes, so, exactly. So. Like this, th I'll move on to this, it's a good segue. This was only $25 and it's a, I always get it mixed up, so this is a crocodile. Mm -hmm. Okay, crocodile head. Um, I think it's fascinating to look at. It's probably one of my favorites. I don't know why. I know nothing about crocodiles, but I love this thing, and it was very cheap. It was only twenty-five dollars. Um, I feel like most, um, like anyone who is rem not really into oddities, probably either goes for you know deer or you know like alligator, crocodile type heads. Yeah, they're not hard to find because honestly. they're not like. 
kind of gross looking, you know, and plus there's, I mean, we live in a small town and like, you know, we kind of live in a redneck type of area. So it's like a lot of people are probably drawn towards just having a deer plaque on mm -hmm. the wall and such, but that's probably like the gateway thing into oddities, I would say. I don't know. That's just my observation. But um, yeah, especially like, you know, alligator, crocodile type of heads. It's just like, they're, they're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. The other day I was moving this and I didn't, I forgot to tell you this. I almost dropped it and I oh. went to catch it and the tooth, one of the teeth broke off and it actually scratched me. Like it really hurt. They're very, very sharp. Yeah. Yeah. They look um, sharp. So this tooth is now cracked and missing. I see. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. Um, but <laughs> he's missing quite a few other ones. But anyway, this might be a lame favorite to have, but I just really like it. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of that, um, I don't know if this actually is part of like an alligator crocodile or it's an actual lizard and, but I think it's a lizard. Yeah. It looks kind of lizard ish. <laughs> um, but so for Christmas, babes got me rest in peace is the oddity shop we were talking about. They did a mystery box thing that you could buy for 50 bucks. And generally they had things inside the box that I think they said it was like up to a hundred dollar value, mm -hmm. but you would pay 50 bucks. You just didn't know what you were going to get. You yes. were just going to get a lot of goodies. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll just share some of those little ones with you. Um, but yeah, this is like a little lizard hand. I thought that was kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I grabbed this off the fridge at last second because I forgot that I got this. Um, but this is a bottle opener with a freaky freaky spider inside of it oh people hate that when they notice it they're like oh my god yeah. it is pretty gross if you look at it yeah i mean we have this hanging on the fridge because it is a magnet but like i had this in the drawer for a little while so like if anyone opened the drawer they'd probably just be like ah yeah. spider oh never yeah. mind <laughs> yeah um what else there's a couple things um these ribs were in there yeah i can't honestly i'm sorry i don't remember what animal these are from, but they're still cool. Yeah. Just two little rib bones. Bones are cool. We're made of them. And then this reindeer hair. Yeah, that's what they, they call caribou, it. Caribou? I think it's a caribou but hair. But still cool. I mean, again, the mystery box is a good uh, experience, I think, because this might not have been something that we picked up on our own. Oh, yeah. But now that we own it, it's kind of cool. Because, like, yeah. it's real. This is straight from, a, it's a big chunk of hair. Yeah. Straight from a deer of some kind. So, again, something we probably wouldn't have picked up if we were just shopping. Mm -hmm. But I think opening it up in the box and learning, learning about each piece was a cool experience. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Mystery boxes are fun, too. Yeah. It's just, like, even if you're, like, you're, like, I have no idea what this is. It's just, like, it's just a neat little thing. Mm -hmm. It's just the, I wonder what I'm going to get. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, another mystery box thing. This is, what did you call it? Um, so I know it's a fox, and I think it's called a, is it called a pelt? I can't remember. Is it a bat or a fox? No, that is a fox. It's Are a you fox. kidding me? Okay. That's yeah, crazy. but, but uh, it is very soft. Um, yes, it's a pelt. I was it's right. a pelt, yeah. So, um, and... I'll just say, full disclosure, most of these things, like oddity shops, like a lot of people view oddity shops, it's like, oh, you must kill these animals and do these things to them. It's like, there's a difference between that and taxidermy. It's like most of the people who own oddity shops, it's like, these are a lot of animals that naturally pass away. All of them are And all And the reason that, you know, that happens is because it's like no one wants to just hunt down an animal just to skin it and just have this type of thing. People do. I know people do like people purchase. do that with hunting and then they, you know, go to the taxiderm taxidermist and get, you know, their deer like plaqued on a wall and such, but it's like there's a difference between that and just having an animal pass away. I think even rest in pieces, like they have like little brochures like when you first walk mm -hmm. in, it's just like, yes, these are, you know, where do we get these things? It's like a lot of them, we go to markets and it's like all these, it's like, we want to know that they passed away naturally. Yeah. And it's like, because once something passes away, you can preserve it. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to learn about the animals, especially if things are like going extinct or 
maybe there was a birth defect. Like, I know that they have a couple, like, baby cows and other things like that, that maybe there was a birth defect of some kind or they were two-headed. And so it gives uh, people a chance to learn more about them. Mm -hmm. And then they get to be remembered and kept instead of just being, I don't know. Yeah, especially if forgotten. you, yeah, if you like, you know, stuff in the medical field and such. I mean, there's, um, what is it, the Mutter Museum. Like, we went to the Mutter Museum and there's so much stuff like this, mm -hmm. like, all over that. But it's like, it's giant, like a giant educational tool. Yeah. It's like there's a reason why people preserve things. And Definitely. So why people donate their body to science, you know, when they pass away. So. My grandma did that. I was very proud of her. That's nice. I know. I kind of want to do that. So. Um, anything else from the mystery box? I, there were other things in there, but they were like crystals and um, sage and... Yeah, if you like... That kind of stuff? If you like like mystical, like palmistry, yeah. is that what it's called? I mean... Like palm readings and stuff like that. There's... You know, Audi shops kind of deal with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking of two-headed things, should we share our duck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we actually shared this in, if you follow our channel, we did um, a creepy coffee episode, and we just randomly shared it. But we got it around um, October, the Halloween season. Should I open it? Yeah, you can open it. It might smell funny, though. But, yeah, we have a two-headed duckling. We need to come up with names. We still haven't. I only have a name for one thing I'm going to share in a little bit. Yes, that's true. That's the only name I this have. This <laughs> is the one that we need to have two names that go together. Um, I guess they both should be male or female. I don't think that would work. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know. Dr. It doesn't Jekyll matter. and Mr. Hyde or Mary-Kate and Ashley. <laughs> I think I might love Mary-Kate and Ashley. There you go. Oh, we, you just named our dogs Mary Kate and Ashley. Mary Kate and Ashley. Yeah. This is the best day ever. Yeah, so there's a antique shop in Frederick, Maryland that opened up um, like the end of 2019. So we went the day of their opening. Grand opening. Grand opening. And they had a crap ton of people in this small freaking shop. It was amazing and, though. Yeah, they had a lot of really cool, neat stuff, but there was nothing that really caught our eye that was like, because especially, you know, we had just bought a house yes. and we're like, we can't really afford to spend anything. But mm -hmm. as we were like on our way out, we saw this two-headed duckling and we're like, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. The people who own the shop and they were like, isn't this duckling so cool? And I don't know how, like, they love collecting oddities. All of the stuff that they sell there is from their personal collection. So I guess they just have stuff that they were ready to kind of share with ah. other people. Um, so I don't know how they were willing to give these up because this one's probably one of the coolest ah. things we have. What was the name? You remembered it. Was it Alma Antiques? Yes, Alma Antiques yeah. in downtown Frederick, Maryland. Something we really needed in yeah. our area. The closest oddity shop is um, a place called Bazaar in Baltimore, Maryland. So, but That's where I got my alligator. Is it? Yep. Not from Rest in Pieces? No, this was from Bazaar, now that I think about it. Okay. I believe. So. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> I know. That was the next thing I was going to say. I mean, we're doing our best to give them a shout out, but it is very hard to keep track of where we got the things. Yeah. But at least we were able to shout out all of the ones that are around us that we've been to because yeah. I think it's important to support them. Definitely. Yeah. Do you want to share one of the skulls? Uh, sure. Um, I gotta be careful with this one. Because this thing falls apart so easily. The jaw always wants to come off. Yeah, so this is a coyote skull. Um, Here's one of its teeth that fall out all the time that yeah, we need to glue so, in. So if I'm successful with it, I can actually place it back in the skull and it stays. But that means I literally have to be like microscopically careful. We need to just glue it. Yeah, coyote skull was from um, Bazaar. Like certain skulls, like just skulls by themselves, you can find in oddity shops that, like we said earlier, can be fairly cheap. They're not that hard to find. Um, but you want to move on to yours? <laughs> Sorry, I just realized this one's really easy to move. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to share this one next as you were talking because I also got this from Bazaar, and this is a skunk skull. It's a skunk skull, yeah. Um, 
So, I think we made out pretty well when we went there. That was the one and only time we've gone. It's a very small store, but... It's so small. You literally move your arm and you hit the other end of the store. Pretty much, yeah. So. Yeah. That's that. And then we have one more skull, which is a raccoon, right? This is like one of my favorite presentations. I did this myself. Yeah, she did it herself. It's, really um, nice. it's nothing really all that special, but there's a raccoon skull in there. And I got this really cute little um, like glass dome. Mm. Uh, it has a little bat on top. And I just got some fake moss from Michael's and just kind of placed it in there. Um, so I really like the way that it turned out. You probably can't see it very well, but... Yeah, we'll cut to it. Yeah. Um, super cute. Nice, I love it. Yeah, you did a good job on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, nothing super special, but just a deer hoof. We got this from a place called, this is the only oddity shop we haven't mentioned yet, but we'll get to it. Um, it's a place called Strange and Unusual, and they have two locations, but we went to one location right in the heart of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Um, it's literally in the middle of like hundreds of people all over the streets <laughs> when we went and yeah, we have a story about that yeah we have a story about that and we'll get to that there's something big we'll share at the very end of this video yeah um but yeah they just sell deer hooves just like <laughs> it's like in this like fancy bowl and just like there's like 50 of these yeah. just laying in there like hey this is like 10 bucks and i've always really wanted to like put this on the wall and use it as like a jacket holder or like some sort of hook. <laughs> like how cool would that be? Yeah. And our dogs always want to get a hold of they this. They always want The wanna... day we brought it home, oh my gosh. Yeah, Franco almost. We like, had to hide it day. on top of the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, because he was freaking out. He yeah. was just like, he had his eye on it the whole time. Yeah, just but it's, ready it's to chew super it cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so... So. Speaking of our dogs eating, can I share this, even though yeah. it's very small? Yeah. So, I found my dog chewing on something in the grass one day, and it was a jaw, yeah. an animal jaw, um, that was still fleshy, which was pretty gross, but I can't blame him. Um, so, I let it dry out, just naturally, out in the sun, and this is what I was left with couple teeth and a little teeny tiny bit of a jaw so yeah. <laughs> I have no idea where this came from what kind of animal it was but I'm going to guess probably a fox because yeah. we live along a tree line so mm -hmm. that's my guess I would see fox every now and then so yeah moving on this is a very small thing but this was actually from Bazaar in Baltimore as well this is a mouse skeleton I'll have to cut to another thing but yeah, this was super cheap in this, believe it or not, in this little uh, glass box. You can see all angles of it from each spot, but it's super cool. And yeah, this was like, I think 20 bucks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it reminds you of something that you would see in like science class in school. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was super neat though. And I was just like, oh, this is just a little thing. We just, you know, put a I bunch love that of, one. Yeah, yeah, I love it too. Um, next... I will share with this sucker. I'm um, getting to the big stuff now. Um, this is, um, there's a type of lizard called a minotaur, and this is a minotaur lizard leg. Um, it's, we got this from Rest in Pieces. I feel like this is like really not being preserved super well. Cause you I, think so? Yeah, I see like aspects of this thing that's like kind of falling apart, but. I really like it. I just saw it. It was actually really cheap. I think it was like 30 bucks just for this thing. And I was like, wow. I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, I really like its scales. It's really neat looking. Yeah. But yeah, I got that. <laughs> and um, I'll share this thing. Um, I want to say this was from Rest in Pieces as well. Yeah. yeah, so this is a mummified pig um, in a frame. Um, yeah, this was... I want to say, I I would say it was more on the expensive side because this type of stuff is very rare. I feel like it was like 80 maybe? Yeah, it's very rare. Um, but yeah, it's a mummified pig and poor little thing. But this is something you would definitely find in the Mudder Museum. Mm -hmm. Like we saw st stuff like this all over the Mudder Museum. Yeah. Um, and the Mudder Museum is in... Um, Philly. Is it Philly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you ever go to Philly um, and you like oddities, definitely go to the Mudder Museum. That's it's definitely 
definitely a highlight. It's so funny because there's a lot of people out there that find oddities disgusting or whatever. But how many freaking people were in the Mudder Museum when we went that day? So many. There was tons of people. So don't say you're not curious, <laughs> even if you're grossed out by this stuff. Yeah, it's definitely really interesting stuff. Yeah. Speaking of interesting, do you want me to share this sucker? Yeah. Go okay. for it. So this is my only oddity that I gave a name to. Um, there's a movie called Reanimator, which if you've seen this channel, I probably talk about it a lot, but there's a movie called Reanimator I really like. And there's part of the movie that involves a dead cat, and the cat's name is Rufus. So I named this guy Rufus. But this is, oh man, there's so much glare on I that. I know. I have to cut to it at a separate time. But, um, so this is a cat head wet specimen. And just like the minotaur leg, that's what you saw. That's what um, is what's called a wet specimen. It's basically where you inject a lot of like formaldehyde or you know whatever thing to help preserve something that's dead. And then you basically just put a bunch of alcohol in a jar and you put it in it. And this is a cat head. So this is from Rest in Pieces. This was put on the shelf the day I bought it mm -hmm. and it was ridiculously cheap. I thought this was something that was going to be like $150, $200 and it was literally $50. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought it was priced wrong. I thought it was too and I asked the guy up front, I'm just like, um, that cat head, is that the right price? He's like, yeah. He's like, actually, we just put that out today. He's like, I knew it was going to go fast. He's like, I knew it was going to go fast and it's like, I don't know, I just really loved it and it reminded me of Reanimator, so I just decided to name the cat Rufus. But this is probably my most prized thing yeah. that I have. And I know a lot of people are probably going to have feelings about this one, but I don't really see the difference between having that and having these ducks. Whereas someone might be like, oh, they're so cute. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, I would say that the the cat head because its mouth is open and its eyes are you know really odd and such but i don't know it's like people people love cats and i guess they would hate to see you know a cat being preserved but that's the same thing as like if you got your tax you <laughs> you got your cat taxidermied mm -hmm. and you know was just like posed a certain way i don't know and i know people are probably sensitive on the subject but right definitely I, not I, trying to start a debate but yeah. Just saying that we have these things because we appreciate the animals and we appreciate the art of taxidermy. Yeah, it's we're like, not keeping these things because we're like cat haters and love to look at this cat that passed away. Like, yeah. no, we like it because we want to appreciate it and it reminds me of his favorite movie. Like, yeah. Also, I mean, I love animals alive. Why can't you love animals after they passed away naturally? Yeah. So. Yeah. So, but. Yeah, that's that's actually my favorite thing is um, Rufus the cat head. Yeah. Um, it was just it t caught me by surprise. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if they kept it in that um, that glass box um, a little longer, it probably would have freaked some people out. And it definitely does freak people out. We've with, we've been in the store when a couple people were like, "All right, we're done. Bye." Yeah. It, it, funny story about um, Rufus too. Um, when we bought this house, I had, back at home, I had a bunch of my, my oddity stuff, and I had Rufus, and believe it or not, my mother, of all people, who probably was freaked out by this thing, brought it to me, and, like, was super careful about it and everything, I'm like, you had it all wrapped up. Yeah, I'm like, you seriously didn't have to worry about that, I was gonna come get it myself, but, yeah, she was, she was like, no, I, I just decided to take care of it, I was like, I thought you tried to avoid it at all costs, didn't want to see what it looked like, or anything. So, I mean, we do keep it pretty hidden if we have um, any, like, family or guests over because I don't want to freak anyone yeah, out. Yeah, I don't want to offend anybody or start a debate, like I said. Yeah. We're not here to convince anyone. Yeah, I don't hunt animals. Yeah. Trust me, so. Anyway. Like, I, I'm a big animal lover, and I know you are, too. We have Definitely. two dogs, so, who won't shut up, by the way. <laughs> okay, I think we're on to the final thing. Woohoo! Final thing, do you want to grab, grab it? it? Alrighty. This beautiful piece of art. Yes. So I gotta hold it up a little bit. But, so, we got this sucker from the place I mentioned earlier called The Strange and Unusual in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the heart of Philadelphia. 
So we just wanted to go to this oddity shop and just see what they had and just look around and such. And we actually, I got a t-shirt from there and I know, didn't you get a t-shirt? Mm -hmm. No, you. Oh, I got a tank top, yeah. You got a tank top and we got a strange and unusual beanies. Matching beanies. Matching beanies from there. So nerdy. Yeah, so um, they had this sucker in there though, which was all framed and all prepared and I couldn't help but fall in love with it, especially because it has purple velvet behind the skulls. Mm -hmm. And so we will share the, uh, I lost my wording. We'll share um, what types of skulls are inside of here. Yeah, um, so it's hard to remember because there's five of them. But I have this little card that they made it for the frame. Yeah, which is really nice. And so we, we actually do have two skunk skulls and I think about it. Yep. Because we have there's one here. A box in the middle. Mm -hmm. You got the skunk. There's a mink, muskrat, and bee eater. Yeah, mink is up here, muskrat's down here, box right in the middle, and then I can't see. You got it, bee eater. Below bee your finger. <laughs> bee eater. And then. The mink? The skunk. Oh, I'm sorry, the skunk. Yeah. yeah. We're doing a terrible job. Of but, sharing this. But. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. But yeah, that was, I mean, obviously, based on the frame and the pre presentation, you can definitely tell this was uh, on the expensive side, but we felt it was worth it. Um, the lady who ran the shop was super cool, and she was even so nice because of how delicate that frame is and everything and we were in the heart of Philadelphia so if you walked outside there was like 18 people already trying to bump into you but she was like she's like so um like I can actually hold on to this for you and I don't know where you all parked but um if you want to like pull up put your hazards on I can just run it out to you when you're here I was like that's really really sweet and everything but I was like I honestly would not be able to find my way back to the shop through a car because we were we were parked like maybe three miles away or mm -hmm. something so but we just sucked it up and we carried it <laughs> we carried it through like the streets of Philadelphia and people were just like staring at us like we're insane because we couldn't wrap it yeah you like, couldn't wrap it like she's too delicate I think she gave us like a bag but we didn't even use it there was no bag really uh -uh. oh okay yeah, because I just, like, carried this thing, and I was, like, like yeah. walking through Philadelphia, and people were like, what is yeah. that? Yeah, they definitely gave us some weird looks, but I don't really care. Yeah, I don't either. But So, that's our collection for you. That is our oddities collection. Um, I do have another deer skull that someone found in their backyard and sent me a picture on Thanksgiving Day and was like, hey, do you want this? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. I bought powdered bleach because... Um, we had to clean it. Yeah, we wanted to make sure it was clean. So, I mean, it looked like it was completely, you know, decayed and everything. But I was like, let's clean it. I bought powdered bleach for the whole thing, mm -hmm. and I just soaked it in a bucket for like a day. Mm -hmm. A couple and, days. Yeah, one or two days or something yeah. like that. But yeah, and then, but we don't have it because it's at your old house. Yeah. But. My parents have it in their garage right now. <laughs> I should get that. Yeah, we should. We'll but share it one day. Maybe I just we'll... love that people think of us and are like, would you like this? Yeah. It's... Like, it really freaked her out. It's somebody I work with, and she was like, I know you're going to like this, so. It's funny. I'm flattered that anytime someone thinks of something macabre or is told something macabre, they're like, oh, this reminds me of Brett and Kelly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's neat. It is pretty cool. I mean, maybe that's why we named our channel Love Bats in the Belfry. I don't know kind of makes sense yeah but we are loving i i promise <laughs> i think so we're we, very caring uh, yeah i think i mean i try to be nice so do yeah. i succeed i i would say so yes yeah Thank so you. i'm glad we finally got to share all this stuff with you yeah, this is our too. small little collection we'll keep it forever and keep it going mm -hmm. yeah slowly but surely yeah so um i guess that does it for this yeah out of these video um, yeah, if you, we want to thank you all for watching and tuning in to Love Bats and the Belfry channel. Um, our dogs are really barky and annoying today, but we still love them. But if you like this video or if you have, you know, certain things, um, 
oddities that you collect, um, just leave your thoughts and opinions <gasps> in the comments. I almost forgot my last oddity. What? You. Oh, thank you, babe. This is Brett. He's one of my favorite oddities. Um, he just turned 29. He's very handsome. Um, I really like looking at him, and yeah. Hi. I've only had him for about three years, but yeah, he's a good one. He's one of my favorites. You're my favorite. You can edit this out if you want. <laughs> no, I, this is staying in. Oh. Yeah. So, um, that's gonna do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's gonna do it here for Love That's in the Belfry. My name is Brett. I'm Kelly. And thank you for tuning in, and we will see you in a future video. Bye. Bye.